So today, eight of the 15 count charge were quashed and dismissed, leaving seven counts that are on wobbling legs, counts that wobble, counts that are groggling, counts that fumble, counts that duado. They will not stand. They will not hold water. Because we cannot build something upon nothing and expect it to stay. It is not possible. If eight counts went, the remaining seven, as a necessary colloquy, we go. It follows as the night, the day, as the rainy season, the dry season. But when we look at those seven counts, whether they even hold any water at all in law, we'll be able to refer to the case of FRM versus Saraki, where some counts were quashed by the Code of Conduct Tribunal and left some. I quashed all, and then the Court of Appeal decided to quash some and left some. And the Supreme Court said, this is not possible. If you quashed A, B, C, D, the other ones that are also related to it by affinity, by consanguinity, they should also be quashed. That was how Saraki got free. So we will test this remaining count charge. Let the prosecution get that notice at the appellate court. So we then proceeded to move our bail application. That the defendant, Mazi Namdekanu, deserves to be granted bail. The case of the prosecution has always been, and this is sheer falsehood, that Nam the Kanu jumped bail. And that, that was why he was forci forcibly renditioned back to Nigeria. A rendition which the court did not agree with us today, which we shall test. That is contrary to provisions of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, culturally to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, contrary to the International Covenant on Social and Political Rights, contrary to the instrument dealing with indigenous people's rights. When you have a treaty with a country such as Nigeria with Kenya, and a person voluntarily entered Kenya, and you renditioned him forcefully through torture, inhuman and degrading treatment back to Nigeria on the 27th of June, 2021. All the cases based on my research across the world show that such a person cannot be tried. Cannot be tried at all. Now the Kanu was enjoying his bail he was within Nigeria. He never left for abroad. Then on the 14th of September 2017, the military went in armored trucks as if they were going to war in Sambisa forest and invaded the home of Namdi Kano and his father, His Royal Majesty Kano, who is now late invaded him brutally, savagely, and murdered, mowed down eight innocent, I mean 28 innocent Nigerians that were there without cause. They called it Operation Python Dance and other operations. We've not seen Operation Python Dance in Sabisa Forest and Chibok and Dapchi. They murdered 28 innocent Nigerians in cold blood. Somehow, Unam the Kano, like the cat with proverbial nine lives, was able to escape. Are you saying that a person who was to be killed and ran away for certain death jumped bail? The answer is no. It was late Chief Emko Abiola who made that statement. He said, You see, you see, you, you, they, they, they said they should have waited. Uh, uh, Bacha, 
that will, they were asking me, why, why did you run abroad? Why, why did you fly abroad? I'm telling you now, Tony, Tony and Nenny, I'm, I'm now telling you, I was already in the air before I discovered that even my, my passport was not with me. A, a bird does not tell another bird that a stone is coming. He simply flies away. A, a, no man stands in front of a moving train and, uh, and expects to leave. He will be crushed. So you are saying, in Nambikano, after escaping, barely with his life, should wait in Nigeria. If he had been killed, he wouldn't be standing trying. So he did not jump bail. Rather, they forced him into exile. And he went as a citizen of Britain to Kenya, where he was forcefully and forcibly under torture, inhuman and degraded treatment, rendition back to Nigeria. So this is a case deserving of bail. And we, we implored my lord to grant him bail. Even if she wants to subject it to certain conditions, let me tell you, even under the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, bail is allowed. It's discretionary. It's allowed even in capital offenses like murder, like treason. And mind you, Namdi Kanu is not standing trial for treason. No. It's very important. He's standing trial for offenses I mean, relating to treasonable felony, but not treason itself. For example, there's a difference between saying the person is standing trial for murder and standing trial for manslaughter. They are different. One carries capital punishment. Unam the Kanu is not standing trial for any capital punishment. But the Administration of Criminal Justice Act still says even in capital offenses, an accused person can be granted bail, subject to the discretion of the court. And do you know why this has become more necessary? Section 36 of the Constitution has given every Nigerian the right to fair hearing. And fair hearing, like I told the court, also means a fair trial. A fair trial includes all the circumstances surrounding a case. That is Section 36, because our criminal justice system is the Anglo-Saxon based criminal justice system. It is accusatorial. It is not inquisitorial. What does this mean? It means that it is the innocence of a person and not his guilt that is presumed. It is different from the French model, which is inquisitorial, wherein your innocence, your, your guilt is presumed and you are told to prove your innocence. We are not operating that. And that is why Section 36 of the Constitution puts it there clearly that you have to prove the offense against a person. And the evidence act goes for that to say you must prove it beyond reasonable doubt. Any doubt, no matter how, how small, even if it's like that little straw that broke the camel's back, would be resolved in favor of the accused person. Now the canon, therefore, is entitled to be subject to the court's discretion and imposition of certain conditions. Because we have shown that he did not jump B. He almost got killed. That was why he ran away. So we believe that this is a proper case for the court to grant bail so that Nnamdi Kanu will be alive to start trial. That is why in law we say come and stand trial. Come and stand trial means you have to be well, hale and hearty to stand trial. He didn't say come and sit down trial or come and lie down trial or come and prostrate trial or come and be in the grave trial or come and be in the hospital trial. He says, come and stand trial. And can we say there's a fair trial when in our bail application, now the can is complaining of solitary confinement. That is not allowed. He's only brought out maybe once in a week to receive vitamin D, the sun. And that when he, even when, at that, when he comes out, by other prisoners or prison inmates or de uh, detainees mainly greeting him. Such detainees are subjected
to harrowing experience. They themselves are moved to solitary confinement as punishment for exchanging views or greetings with Nandikano. He says that he's not allowed to practice his Jewish religion. He says his health is deteriorating fast. His potassium level, his sugar level, his blood pressure, his heart issues. He says he needs his private doctor to give a second opinion, but they are not allowing it. We, the lawyers, are not being allowed. The judge was again forced today to make another order, ex abundante cautela, for the avoidance of doubt again today that the clothes they are brought here now show, they should, in fact, he should not take them with him to GSS headquarters. Do you know why? Because 19 times between February 21, 2022, and this week, 19 times, the lawyers and family members are taking this close to him and the DSS refused. I personally led the lawyers on three occasions. Can you say that's a fair trial? If I carry a bulky file, you must drop the file. My wristwatch, my ring, only my ring they allowed me last time to stay. My wristwatch is removed. All my viral, my reading glass, even my handkerchief, they even took this handkerchief. Can you say that's a fair trial where a lawyer cannot confer freely with his client? And of course, the little space one will give it to us to confer. You, you don't need to be told that it is all bugged. It is gadgets. Is that a fair trial? So when I'm discussing strategy and a case with my client, then my opponent, the prosecution, the state, with all its federal power level, apparatchet, should be listening to my conversation. Then when I go, you put it on. I say, look at these idiots. Look at what they were saying. Is that a fair trial? When you eavesdrop on me? So, what kind of criminal justice system are we operating? That the person who unlawfully abducted a person, the accused back from Kenya on the 27th, of June 2021, all that torture, inhuman and degrading treatment, that the same person is the one that investigated him, the same state. That the same state, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is the one that is prosecuting him. That the same state, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is the one getting the witnesses that will testify against him. That the same state, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is the one that is also having custody of this same person. So, Head or day, they are winning. So, where is the justice of this matter? Where is the fair trial? Where is the level playing ground? I've had some clients who were standing trial. I begged some courts like this to grant them bail. I don't want to mention one of them. He was still undergoing trial and he dropped dead. The next time the case came up, I made sure I was in court. I asked the, the prosecution. I don't want to also mention his name. I said, we are here now. Where is the subject matter of trial? He said, he's dead. I said, oh, he's dead. He said, I said, so what's the effect of that? He said, that means the case has terminated. I said, oh, why don't you try his corpse from the grave? Try his corpse from the grave? Of course, that was the end of that matter. But that, my client was not allowed to be able to, to show that he was innocent because the prosecution couldn't prove the matter under a name and shame name and shame government name them and shame them just accuse them of crimes even when, when we don't we can't prove it what you call media trial outrageous atrocious then you carry those accusations those allegations into the grave with you that is not fair the people have families they have friends they have associates they have community people. That is not fair. So I, that was why I called the court to grant us it. By the grace of God, um, we had a wonderful outing, and God is on the throne. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, 
As you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.